Coming up, the best Gamecock team got their biggest support of the season, and it showed. Meanwhile, the NBA played the most important, meaningless game around, and it got a little splashy. But did NBA stars even shine the brightest in Cleveland? All these stories and more tonight on Palmetto State Sports. From the Blue Ridge Mountains and through the Midlands down to the coast, there's plenty of sports highlights and moments here in South Carolina. There's only one place where you'll catch all the action. This is Palmetto State Sports. Welcome into Palmetto State Sports. I'm Will Crownsberg. And I'm Brianna Walton. Thanks for joining us tonight. March Madness may be weeks away, but high stakes hoops are already well underway at the high school level. Junior star and Gamecock target JJ Jackson led Ridgeview to a 63 to 44 win at Fort Mill last night and advanced his team to face Dutch Fort in the 5A Lower State Championship. Around the Midlands, AC Floor and Irmo are both among the final eight in the 4A Boys Tournament, while Keenan faces Seneca tomorrow to advance to Upper State in 3A. On the women's side, Westwood and AC Flora are in the 4A quarters with potential upper state showdown looming while Lower Richland and Gray Collegiate remains in 3A and 2A respectively. State championship games will be March 3rd through 5th at the USC Aiken Convocation Center. On the topic of basketball, but this time the Gamecocks women's team. And as we all know, South Carolina defeated Tennessee 67-53. to but The real story is the Gamecock fans, or fams as the basketball team would like to call them. And after calling on Gamecock Nation to pack the stands, here's what Don Staley had to say about the sold-out crowd. You know, make our living room conversations, conversations truth. I um, mean, I think it's, it's special. I mean, what we've been able to do here, what the fans have been, been able to create here is truly something special. And I just hope, you know, that as we continue to write the history books, that the fans are, are, are a real big part of it. The Gamecocks will hit the road to Texas A&M. You can catch the game on the SEC Network with tip-off set for 8.30. After a dramatic walk-off win to claim an opening weekend series against UNC Greensboro, the Gamecock baseball team hit the field once again this afternoon and beat Winthrop 7-1 just a moment ago. Mark Kingston in South Carolina welcomed in the Eagles for a little midweek action this afternoon with redshirt freshman Cade Austin on the mound. Austin lasted four innings and put himself in line for the win before being relieved by Aiden Hunter in the fifth. On offense, the Gamecocks were once again led by Andrew Eister, who knocked in two runs in the first six frames after his two home run performance against UNC Greensboro. South Carolina is off for three days for hosting George Washington at 4 p.m. on Friday, 2 p.m. on Saturday, and 1.30 on Sunday, with all games available on the SEC Network Plus. And as for the orange and purple, the Tigers baseball team swept Indiana to take their first series of the season. Starting out on Friday, Clemson shut out the Hoosiers 9-0 behind Mack Anglin on the mound, who threw five hitless innings and eight strikeouts. And over the final four innings, Clemson bullpen allowed just three hits. Moving on to Saturday, the Indiana took an early 4-0 lead. Homers and doubles from Clemson and unfortunate errors from Indiana allowed the Tigers to score 19 unanswered runs. And just like the Gamecocks' final triumph, Sunday's matchup ended in a walk-off in the 10th inning, with Clemson winning the game 5-4. In the 10th, after two leadoff singles, Briar Hawkins would belt a deep fly ball in the right, letting Benjamin Blackwell tag up with the win for the Tigers. I'm just so excited the baseball season is back. The Gamecock game ended literally as we were rolling the intro for this show. So glad that they beat uh, Winthrop, but as well seeing Clemson sweep over the weekend and they're playing College of Charleston today. It's great to have college baseball. I know, and the one thing I'm so excited for is the Clemson and Carolina baseball series. It's coming up pretty soon. It's coming up. and. As per usual, they play at three different locations, one game here, one game in Clemson, one at a neutral site. So that's going to be re another really great series. I'm very excited, and I feel like the stands are going to be packed for that game as well. That's all for the headlines in Palmetto State Sports, but coming up, a look into the sports world, but beyond South Carolina, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back outside of the Carolinas, a look into the pros. SGTV News 4 sports reporter Spencer Ball is here to break down the NBA All-Star Game. Spencer? Thanks, Brianna. This past Sunday, we saw another edition of the NBA All-Star Game play out with Team LeBron getting the victory over Team Durant by a score of 163 to 160. Steph Curry brought home the MVP with a strong performance of 50 points and splashing a record 16 threes to win him the Kobe Bryant All-Star Game MVP award. 
Although Steph was the star of the show, it was the team captain, LeBron James, who sealed the game for his team with a signature game-winning fadeaway jump shot. With the NBA taking a break after the All-Star weekend, regular season action will resume this Thursday with about 25 games left in the season before the playoffs get underway. A little preview for the playoffs shows the Eastern Conference in a two-way tie for first place between the Miami Heat and Chicago Bulls. They're tied for first with a record of 38 and 21. In the West, the Phoenix Suns have far and away the best record in the league at 48 and 10, and we will see how everything shakes out when the playoffs start midway through April. Moving from the court to the diamond, we're back with more MLB lockout news. We've seen the MLB and MLBPA continue their meetings in Jupiter, Florida yesterday, and many believe that if a deal is not reached soon, then opening day will have to be delayed. The MLB only slightly changed their offer to match the players' wishes, which is not promising for baseball fans who just want to watch their favorite team step out onto the field on March 31st, which is the date for opening day as of right now. Although the MLB is beginning to budge a little, but in their demands, it seems there's still a lot of ground to be covered for the season to start on time and many experts believe the deal will have to be done within the week for that to happen. After the break, basketball is not the only story at All-Star Weekend. More on the celebrity side when we come back. Welcome back, I'm Courtney Holman. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse was not short on stars as All-Star Weekend was in full effect last week in Cleveland, and of course you know all the celebrities popped out to see their favorite All-Star. Cleveland was nothing short of stars with people like Ludacris, Flavor Flav, Spike Lee, Jennifer Hudson, and even Adele, just to name a few. All-Star Weekend kicked off Friday night with the Ruffles Celebrity Basketball Game, and it definitely did not disappoint. Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famers Dominique Wilkins and Bill Walton served as head coaches for the game, and Peloton workout influencer Alex Toussaint took home the MVP, scoring 18 points and leading Team Walton to a 65-51 victory over Team Neek. You know, I never really used to watch the celebrity basketball game, except for when Quavo, you know, they always bring Quavo right, out. Right, right. He's a fan favorite, but I, I actually enjoyed the celebrity basketball game this year. I really liked bringing in Dominique Wilkins and Bill Walton, because Bill Walton is such a big personality. Yes. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Like, he calls a few games, like, college yes. basketball games. He's just so, like, weird and wacky, and it's, it's interesting to see, like, a, after his basketball career, right. his personality's gotten like, even bigger and he's become more interesting. Right. So I liked that kind of thing. Right, and it was great because, you know, the NBA was celebrating their 75th season this year. So it was great to see all those, like, old, retired players, like, legends come back. Yeah, like, it, it was, was great. 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 All-Star Saturday night was filled with excitement as well with events such as the skills contest, the three-point contest, and the highlight of the night, the slam dunk contest. Carl Anthony Towns took home the crown in the three-point contest after scoring 29 points and breaking the record for the most points scored since Devin Booker's 28 points in 2018. And Obi Toppin of the New York Knicks took home the crown in the slam dunk contest. The night was capped off with a spectacular performance from DJ Callen, who brought out special guests Lil Wayne, Ludacris, Gunna, Migos, Lil Baby, and Mary J. Blige. When he was bringing all those people out, I was like, who else is coming? I, it was like a string of like- It great, was a great, string was like, of people. People just kept, it was like a clown car of like solid music. I really? Just, and Mary J. Like, Blige, she was busy. I mean, she did the Super Bowl and then now this, I mean, she was busy. Within a week, that's amazing. Within that's a week. I mad respect for Mary. But you know, Auntie Mary, she got it going yeah. on. So coming up after the break, a look into your Palmetto State sports calendar. Stay tuned. Before we go, let's take a look at the Palmetto State calendar. Gamecock men's basketball is in action twice this week, beginning with a home match against Mississippi State tomorrow night, and continuing with a trip to Alabama on Saturday. Don Staley and the Gamecocks women's will match that and with two road games this week, a visit to Texas A&M on Thursday and one to Ole Miss on Sunday afternoon. And two weeks ago, softball was the story, but now baseball joins the schedule. The Gamecock softball squad has a trip to Georgia Southern tomorrow night and four games in their own Carolina Classic Friday through Sunday, while baseball will host a traditional three-game set against George Washington after their victory tonight against Winthrop. To our Northwest, both Clemson basketball teams have a pair of games this week with the men's playing at Wake Forest tomorrow and Boston College on Saturday, while the Tiger women have a road trip with trips to Notre Dame at Thursday and Miami on Sunday. As for the their teams on the diamond, Tiger Baseball follows up today's CFC game with three against Hartford Friday through Sunday. And the Tiger Softball team has a road tilt against Charlotte tomorrow before the Clemson Classic featuring Boston University, St. Francis, and Akron this weekend. Finally, Coastal Carolina wraps up their hardcourt seasons this week with the men on the road in Arkansas to face Arkansas State and Little Rock, while the women host Southern South Alabama and Troy. 
Meanwhile, the Chanticleer softball team will host a third tournament in a row, this time the Chanticleer Showdown, with teams including Maryland and Draymond. CCU Baseball, meanwhile, will launch the Carolina Coastline Classic. They will include two Big Ten teams in Rutgers and Illinois, stretch all the way until Monday with the Chant face Ball State. That's all we have for tonight's edition of Palmetto State Sports. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at SGTV Sports. To keep up with all our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTVonline.com. For SGTV News for Sports, I'm Will Crownsburg. And I'm Brianna Walton. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina. Forever to thee.